Jonathan from Rain Brothers here, rainbrothers.com. Today we're going to go over the complete installation of a low producing well reservoir system. <laughs> On a typical setup, you're going to have your well pump supplying the house. There's going to be a water line coming in from the well, as well as an electric, uh, as well as a wire. Um, they're probably taped together, and they're going to travel in a traditional setup to a pressure tank, which is probably a big blue tank in your basement. That pressure tank is going to have something like this on the front of it. This is a pressure switch. This is called the tank T, pressure gauge. We're going to be concerned mainly with the water line coming into the, into the pressure tank, into the tank T, as well as the wire coming from the well into the pressure switch. So please identify which is coming from the well, which side of the tank T is coming from the well, and which side is supplying the rest of your house. Once you identify the water line coming from your well, you're going to want to turn off the breaker to the well pump on your in your electrical panel. Hopefully it's labeled. Then you're going to want to open your drain valves in your house to drain out all the water pressure in the system. Um, you, you're going to want to make sure also if you have a hot water tank, if it's an electric tank, uh, to turn off the circuit to the hot water tank so the heating element doesn't, doesn't um, uh, blow. Um, and you're going to want to look at the pressure gauge on your pressure tank and make sure it reads zero. Once it does, open up the boiler drain on front of your tank T to drain out any remaining pressure in the, in the pressure tank system. It's a good idea to run a short length of garden hose on this boiler drain, run it to a floor drain to drain out the remaining water in the pressure tank. Once that water is fully drained, we are going to cut the well line before it gets into the pressure tank. From that point, wherever we cut it, we're going to now run this water line into our well reservoir tank. This is going to receive water from your low producing well and it's going to accumulate in this tank and from this tank, we're going to pump the water into the house. So we're going to cut that water line from the well and make sure you know what kind of piping this is. It's usually something called one inch IPS poly pipe. One inch IPS poly pipe uses um, barbed fittings to uh, insert into the poly pipe. You may have different type of water line you may have inch and a quarter you may have uh, what's called CTS which is copper tubing size um, which uses a slightly different fitting IPS is iron pipe size um, but you're going to want to know for certain what that water line type is before you cut into it and then you're going to adapt it to whatever plumbing material you're comfortable with and run that water line into the top of the water tank using one of our uh, one inch tank penetration gaskets that come with our well reservoir kit. That's going to be what feeds the well tank, the reservoir tank. Next, you're going to install the, the new pump, the Springer Series traditional pump, inside the well reservoir tank. And you're going to run this water line. Let me use a different color marker. You're going to run this water line out of the top of the pump, out of the tank, again using our one inch tank penetration gasket. And you're gonna run this water line right into the tank T um, as if it were the, the old well line. So we're, we're just basically interrupting this water line and making a circuit. We're running into the water tank and then from the water tank back into your existing tank T. On a plumbing side of things, that's all there is to it. Uh, that, that is truly everything. On the electrical side of thing, things, we're going to do uh, a few steps here to make sure you have a good functioning system. 
So once we have the plumbing completed, um, we're gonna we're gonna delve into the electrical side of things. On your pressure switch, make sure the power is off before you work on it. You're gonna have a, a pump side, which is the load side, and you're gonna have the, the panel side, which is the line side. The, the, this is being fed, the power supply is coming from your electrical panel into this pressure switch and then going back out to your old well pump. Before we begin, you're going to want to identify which is the, is the panel side of the pressure switch and which is the pump side. You're also going to want to note what the voltage is of your existing well pump. Most well pumps are 230 volt, some are 115 volt. The easiest way to tell is by looking in the electrical panel and seeing if it's a single pole breaker or if it's a double pole breaker, which takes up two slots in the electrical panel. Once you've identified the pump side of the pressure switch as well as the pump voltage, we're going to take out the wiring for the well pump. We're unscrewing all three terminals, the, in this case, the hot, the neutral, and the ground, or if it's a 230 volt, it'll just be two hots in the ground, there's no neutral leg. Once you have that wire disconnected, we're gonna run this wire, instead of going through a pressure switch, we're gonna use our little fuse pump saver to supply power to your low producing well pump. The pump saver is available in 115 volt and 230 volt, but this well pump is no longer going to go through a pressure switch, but just a pump saver and our normally closed float switch. So we are removing the well pump wiring from the pressure switch, and now we're going to run it to our pump saver device. So uh, if we're illustrating this on the board, we're going to disconnect that, that black dotted line from the pressure switch. We're going to mount this pump saver. And we're going to run the well pump power into the pump saver. Then we're going to take a new electrical circuit. Uh, we're going to put in a, a new breaker and run, or you can you can use this existing power supply. This is where it gets a little complicated. It's always a good idea to consult an electrician. But uh, we'll, for the sake of the simplicity, we're gonna put in a new breaker and we're gonna run a new dedicated power supply into the pump saver. What that looks like inside the pump saver itself, if we remove the cover, we have the gray wire. This is the this is the old well pump wiring. It's coming into the pump saver. You'll notice there's a L1 in, L1 out, L2 in, L2 out. In is going to be from the panel. Out is going to be going to the pump. So we have our pump. We have one one wire going to the L1 out, the other wire going to the L2 out. Then the panel supply is coming to L1 in, L2 in. It's very, very simple, very straightforward. So we have a dedicated power supply coming from the electrical panel and going back out to that old well pump. Now, the other thing that we need to control this well pump is a normally closed float switch, this device right here, that's gonna be installed inside the well reservoir tank. So we're also going to have uh, a cable coming from this pump saver going into the top of this well reservoir tank. We're going to put our cable weight in and then have, have our float switch inside the tank. This float switch in the downward position is going to send power to the, to the well pump. As long as there's water in the well, it's going to send power to the well pump which is gonna call for this, for this pump to start filling the tank. As the water level in the tank rises, this float switch will go upwards and will turn the pump off. 
so that we're never overfilling over the tank. So to bring this wire into the pump saver and wiring it into the pump saver is it's actually very very simple. We're gonna uh, there's knockouts on the bottom of the pump saver or on the side. You can use any of these, um, and definitely use the uh, the knockout clamps. Now we're, we didn't use it for demonstration purposes because it's a lot easier without. But um, make sure to use the knockout clamps. You may need to run everything in conduit. Consult local electrical codes. But all we're going to do with this this normally closed float switch is we're going to take one of the one of the hot legs of the pump. It doesn't matter which one. We can we can interrupt the the black wire from the panel. We can interrupt the black wire from the pump. It doesn't it doesn't matter. In this case, let's just do it from the pump. We're going to take this wire out. You'll notice there's a black and white wire on the normally closed float switch. Pay no attention to the colors. I know it's super confusing. These colors mean nothing other than differentiating between the two. You're going to take one side of the float switch. doesn't matter which side, but I like to use the white side. I'm going to wire nut it to the to the hot wire supplying the pump power and then I'm going to take the black side of this float switch and put it back into this terminal where the hot wire was um, before so all we did was instead of running that hot wire uh, supplying power to the pump through this pump saver directly we just interrupted that, that hot wire with a, a switch. Very simple, very simple to install. Now the last step in completing this well reservoir tank installation is wiring up the new pump inside the reservoir tank. And actually we're gonna wire it back into this pressure switch. So we're gonna use the old pressure tank and the old pressure switch. We're, we're taking the well off of it completely, and we're gonna use it for the new pump. So that power supply coming from the new pump, is gonna come up on the top of the reservoir tank, and we're gonna wire that right into the other side of our pressure switch. Now, let's say this, this well pump was a 230 volt well pump. We want, if we want to simplify everything, we'll keep that, that power supply that's running from the electrical panel. We'll just keep it going to the pressure switch. We're not going to touch this. But that means there's 230 volts coming into this pressure switch. So we want to make sure to select a 230 volt pump for inside the reservoir tank. So that, that way we don't have to do anything with this dedicated circuit. Likewise, if we have a 230 volt pump, we need to make sure that this power supply, this new power supply that's going to the pump saver is 230 volts to match that, that old well pump. You also want to note the, the old uh, amperage rating on the circuit to here to make sure that, it's, that it matches the, the old well pump uh, amperage rating. So like, let's say this was a 230 volt 20 amp breaker, make sure this new one is a 230 volt 20 amp breaker to supply power to the pump saver. Here's where it gets a little tricky. If you don't have room for a double pole breaker in your panel, you may need to run a 115 volt pump inside the reservoir tank, in which case you need to switch out the breaker in the panel to now change this to 115 volt supplying the pressure switch and then use that old breaker uh, that was in the panel to supply the pump saver. It gets a little complicated. We always, always, always recommend consulting an electrician and having an electrician do it. Uh, this, this does get dangerous. You want to make sure that you know what you're doing and you're comfortable with this before you delve into things like the electrical panel and the, and the pressure switch and pump saver. This is the basic setup for our well, our low producing well reservoir kit. The one thing that I forgot to mention is that the reason that we put in this pump saver now into 
this, the equation is that this pump saver will uh, read an amperage draw on your well pump. If the well has water in it, it's going to draw a higher amperage because it's, it's expelling water than if the well is dry. If the well is dry and it's just expelling air, it's going to, the amperage will drop. This will detect the amperage drop and shut the pump off so it doesn't keep running that well pump and burn up the well pump. When you're setting this pump saver up for the first time, you're going to want to make sure before you power it up that your well has water in it. If you have to wait a day to make sure, that's that's great. But you're going to have this dial. It, it comes preset to calibrate. There's a there's a uh, you can use a flathead screw uh, to turn it, but it, it you'll turn it to C A L calibrate. When it's in the calibrate mode, again you're making sure that the well has water in it. You're going to energize the circuit, make sure that the the green lights light up as as is displayed on here. And it's going to go into calibration mode. It's going to read that amperage draw on the pump, and then it's going to shut down. Once it shuts down, you're going to take a flathead screwdriver and move this, this screw to a duration. I always recommend starting at uh, 120, 160. That duration is how many minutes um, after the well goes dry until the well pump, until this kicks the well pump back on to try to see if there's water again in the system. This is a very effective way of managing a low producing well. And this, this kit, I hope you'll find, is uh, the perfect components for a, a great basement well reservoir setup. As always, this kit is available on our website, www.rainbrothers.com. We also have the basement tanks that are designed to fit through doorways. We hope you find them at a good price. If you find another price that's lower elsewhere, please give us a chance. We always love to price match and get you best pricing possible. We really appreciate your support and please like and subscribe uh, to keep these videos going.